Hey there, awesome GMs. Have you ever wanted to add dynamic token transformations into your game, but you just didn't know how? Do you play on Foundry Virtual Tabletop? Well, I'm gonna show you how, using the Pathfinder 2nd Edition built-in rule elements, how you can automatically change a token's image based on a transformation. There's gonna be no more manual swapping, so let's get started. There's many reasons why you might wanna change a token's image, temporary or permanent. And so let's start with the item. Say you have a potion that when you drink it, you change image to a fox. So we created a new item. We called it Fox Drink. Drink to be a fox for one hour. You go over to your rule elements. If you're a player, you might not have access to this. So ask your GM for permission or, or see if they can set something up for you. But you go to rules and you're gonna add the token image rule element. You can do that by just clicking down on this drop down box, find token image and hit new rule element. I've already have this one built. There's no predicate. The predicate's like the if and statement to if the token's gonna to change image, but I'm gonna show you that you can use it without a predicate. You put in the image path to what you want to change the image to. If you're using dy dynamic tokens, you wanna also go to the second page and put in subject texture. Make sure you put in here, and then we come back, and that's it. We close this. Now, whenever we apply this Fox Strength effect to our character, Fred, he will change image. That's simple. Fred's a fox. He drank the fox potion. We did take the potion off. Turns back to Fred. Another common reason why you might wanna change your token image is change shape. There are several ancestries that are built into this. Fred the Not Fox here is a kitsune. And come with the kitsune is a feet change shape. But there's no automation to the feet. There is no token image rule element. Well, first you need to figure out the predicate. When or why will they change their token shape? Well, they're gonna change their shape based on humanoid or tailless, based on this current form drop down or roll option, that roll option is automatically built into Foundry. It is built into the ancestry. So if I hit edit item and I scroll down, here's this roll option. It's just there as a predicate to key off on other abilities or other things to tie into. But how do you find the proper syntax or wording for a predicate? Well, roll inspector will be your best friend when you're doing any type of roll, rule elements and needing the predicate. So we wanna know what it looks like when they become tailless. How do we key off this current form of being tailless? You see nothing's changed here. Just roll anything. We'll roll an unarmed strike. And we'll go to the chat dialog. We'll come here and we'll right click inspect roll. This, you can find all kinds of things. You'll be able to find what weapons they have, what armor they're wearing, items, all kinds of things. But we're looking for tailless. So just type in tailless, change shape, tailless. Highlight that. Control C to copy and close it out. Now we can go back to our chain shape. And again, the token image rule element, you can put on anything. It doesn't have to be this exact feet, just something on the character. I like putting it on the chain shape because that's the reason why they're changing shape. And it's something I know won't get deleted. So we add in the new rule element and we add in our predicate. The predicate needs to be boxed in with brackets and quotes. So I just copied and pasted it. Change shape tailless. Great. Now I need my file path. Now there is a bug right now with the token image rule element. And it's these boxes get checked. This shows you the scale and the opacity of the token. We don't want that right now. So you need to uncheck them, but that won't do anything. You actually have to go into the rule element, delete the ring is null, make sure you get this comma here, and then delete alpha and scale, and hit apply. And then we're done with that. I'll update this video when that bug gets fixed, where you won't have to do that. And look at that, Fred's already a fox because we left it on tailless. If I change it back to humanoid, Fred goes back to humanoid. Super simple and easy to use, GMs and players as well. You can have fun with it. I like using it as a player to, to engage and be more immersive with my token. For instance, we'll scroll down here, my fighter here, 
open up his character sheet. We'll open up his character sheet. I built when he goes into his Dread Marshal stance, when he gets real intimidating and gives everyone a bonus and is barking orders at the at the enemies and, and scaring them, that when he uses this stance, I have it built into the feet that he's gonna change. So we drag the stance onto him. He gets the effect and look at that. Now he's in a pose that is indicating to me that he's ready for combat and he's, he's guiding the battlefield. And so I can take it off and he changes back. Simple as that. You can have more fun with it. I have a monk up here who was an assassin who has a masquerade scarf and disguise self. So I created my own effect, my own item that's called Ham's Veil of Deception. And inside there, there's a choice set, which you can find more information on. There's some links down below of what disguise am I gonna use? And depending on that disguise I, disguise I click, my image will change. So I'll show you. Do I wanna be an old man? Changes to an old man. Take the disguise back off. Do I wanna be noble lizard folk? I'm pretending to be a noble lizard folk now. And take it back off. How about the pirate orc? Yeah. Just adds a little fun. Helps you with the role playing and character immersion. And then finally, you can get real complex where I create an item of to change token and I add it all the different effects or abilities that this monk can have. His flame stance, crimson shroud, shroud, jolt coil, inner upheaval, just for fun and flavor when I'm in combat to show that I have those auras or abilities activated. And then I, you, I stacked them. So when two of them are affected, when three of them are activated, when four of them are activated, took a while to build all those rule elements as you saw, but to me, it was worth it for the fun. So I can come up here and I add my jolt coil, Bzz, little, little bit of electricity there. I add my inner upheaval, doesn't matter which one of these I select. And I got that blue aura at the top. I'm gonna add in my Crimson Shroud. Ooh, got the, the uh, effect that to me looks like a shroud. And then finally my flame stance where I, I got fire and I have that on the bottom. And these are built in such a way that no matter which combination of these effects I have, I will still display the effects. So there you have it, folks. A few ways to use the token image rule element, starting from the very simple with no predicate to a very complex where you have stacking predicates inside of each other. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe. And let me know in the comments how you're going to use this rule element in your game. Also, let me know, are there any other uh, foundry tips or tricks you'd like me to cover? Thanks. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the open road.